Well, the temperatures are warming up and you may be thinking about going out and hanging out at your pond, maybe fishing a little bit, but there could be some weeds, maybe a little excess vegetation in your way. Here to talk to us about how to manage that situation is Marley Beam. Good morning. Morning. Um, first of all, what are some of the things that we're going to see when we head out to our ponds? Well, it's a pretty sure bet that you'll see a variety of aquatic plants and that's entirely natural. Plants uh, grow on the edges of ponds uh, and as long as they don't get to where you have excessive uh, amounts, uh, it's a good thing for the, for the fish and uh, there are ways to, to live with it. So don't be totally against plants. Plants are, plants are good, uh, especially if you're a fisherman. Uh, you need the plants because uh, the weed beds, whether they're emerged or submerged weed beds, are good places for insects to grow and insects are great food for bluegill and bluegill are great food for bass and bluegill also need a place to hide from the bass somewhat so it's very beneficial from a fishing point of view to have the plants there. And what about some of the algae that we see out on the water? What are some ways that maybe you can manage that a little bit? Algae management uh, is, uh, well first of all we want to make sure it's algae. What we're seeing out here in this site may be uh, Naeus uh, southern naiad and so that's not an algae so if we were to if we were to say if I go to the farm store and say I want something to kill algae you're wasting your time you're not going to have something that's going to be effective against naya so make sure take it to the county extension office make sure it's identified first but uh, if it does turn out to be algae I would begin by considering nutrient sources in the watershed uh, corrals uh, any uh, uh, runoff from fertilized lawns or, or anything of that sort, anything that's putting phosphorus into the pond is usually what's fueling the growth of algae. If you've taken steps to try to control that phosphorus input, then you can look at some short-term control with a copper product. And another thing to possibly consider would be an aquatic dye to reduce the light penetration into the pond. Talk to us a little bit about herbicides. Um, is that something that you can use one time and it's a quick fix or how does that work? Herbicides work quickly, usually, but you have to remember that uh, if, if your pond has weeds in it now and you totally herbicide it, there's a really good chance it'll, they'll come back. So it's just one tool, in, uh, one arrow in the quiver, so to speak. You can't uh, get rid of a plant permanently because the nutrients are there, the warmth is there, the sunlight is there, so something wants to grow in that spot along the edge of your pond. Is there a certain time of the year that's better than the other to start managing your pond? Springtime's better. If you can get ahead of the game before the pond is, is mostly covered up by the plants, it's much easier, it's much cheaper to uh, use herbicides and so on. And the risk of having a low oxygen fish kill as those plants die and decay is much lower in the springtime. So maybe do a little bit of research before you start putting all kinds of stuff in your ponds and ask a lot of questions. That's right, that's right. There, there are lots of things for sale, but uh, that's why uh, if you go to the county extension office, they can guide you through with what's science-based and what we know that's uh, effective and safe in your situation. But please stick to something that's labeled. Uh, don't go with what uh, the neighbor says if it's not labeled, because there are some, some unknown things out there that uh, uh, we worry about. People call us and want to know, are the fish safe to eat? And we can't tell you afterwards because, right, because right. It has, it's not a labeled product. We don't know. The testing hasn't been done. Okay. Thank you so much for your time today. You bet.